Hey guys, welcome back to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan, and in today's video, I'm going to be laying out all my plates so I know where all my windows and doors are going to go, as well as all my studs. Now, when I'm framing this wall, this is going to end up being a corner, and this is just going to end up having a stud on the end of it. Now, when I say corner, what I mean is that when I stand this wall up, I'm going to need backing, something to nail trim to on the inside of the wall. What I could do is place one stud here and place another stud with an inch and a half gap in between it. But when I'm running my electrical, it's very difficult to get it through there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this piece of wood like this. What that'll do is it'll give me backing on the inside here to nail my trim to, and it'll also allow my wires for my electrical to get run through here easily. So anywhere I have a, a spot like this, I'm just gonna put a C. That represents a corner. Now I'm gonna have to figure out where all my windows and doors are going since I don't have a blueprint. First thing I definitely know is that where my wheel well is, this is going to get cut out right here. Not the top plate, but the bottom plate is. And I'm also going to have to support this, this, um, the wheel well with a, with a header. So I know that I'm going to have to put a jack and a king stud. So I'm going to put a J and an X. Now you can me measure over an inch and a half if you want. And mark that. So the first thing I'm going to figure out is where my front door is going to go. I know I have a closet over in this corner where my washer and dryer is going to be, and I have no idea how big that closet's going to be. So if you do some research online, you can find a washer and dryer which will fit inside of there, and you can make the closet to fit those. When you find a washer and dryer that you like, that you're going to use, you can go into the specifications, and it'll give you the dimensions of it. So my width on this washer and dryer is 23 inches by, the width is 23 inches, the depth is 24. And so I also want room for maybe a vacuum, some cleaning supplies, other things. I think I'm going to go three feet off this wall for this closet, for the, the width of the closet, and then I'm going to go two foot six for the depth. So I have to measure in three and a half inches because that represents the inside of this wall. From there, I'll go two foot six and that'll be my closet. Now I can also put that mark down on the uh, on the deck of the trailer. Two foot six. Now we got to take into consideration the thickness of that wall that's going to be there, which is going to be a three and a half inch wall. So one, two, three and a half inch. And I'll also mark that out here so that I can snap that later. Thirty, thirty-three and a half. God, I really don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So after thinking about where my trim's gonna be and where my door frame is gonna be, I figured if I go three inches from this side of the uh, framing, it should give me plenty of room. So I'm gonna put a mark there. That'll represent the inside of my door. From there, I'll measure over an inch and a half and place a mark there. So what this will end up be is a king stud right here and a jack stud right here, which will support my header on the top of my door. If you got a door from a restore or if you bought a brand new door, uh, you'll need to figure out your rough opening. I know that I want to, I'm going to build my front door and uh, I'm going to build it two foot eight wide. Plus I need to put uh, the casing that, that goes around the door. I'm going to figure all those numbers out. Two foot eight is my door. Plus I'll figure an inch on each side. Plus I'll give myself another half inch for mistakes and stuff like that. So two foot ten and a half will be my opening. Now from that two foot ten and a half, I'll put a mark. I'll measure over an inch and a half. And that'll become my jack and stud. Now one thing I just noticed is that my wheel well jack stud is gonna run into my doorway. Now it's not good to have the framing run this way. I need this stud to run all the way up to the uh, to the ceiling, to the top top plate. So instead of putting this here, I'm going to run my wheel well header all the way across to this point right here. Um, I'm going to have an elevated floor when you walk in. So this will be a basement here uh, where I can store my water tanks and my solar power batteries. So this is going to end up being two feet up this door, door opening. So I'm going to eliminate this right here. I'll run the header all the way across to here. And this jack stud on this corner here can sit on top of this 
this header that I'm putting in for my wheel well and it'll run all the way up to the top plate. To better explain how I'm doing that header, my wheel well is going to be right about here. So this header needs to run all the way to here so that my studs are running all the way up to the top of the wall. I can't have a stud run into like a sill here and then have a stud running here. That'll be real weak in this point right here. So if I have my header run all the way to this right here and then I just fill this in with some studs, it'll be stronger. But this doesn't make any sense right now. When I frame my walls, I'll go over it again and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. The front of my trailer is gonna be where my bedroom and my kitchen are. Uh, and if you watch my scale model video, the bedroom's gonna be underneath the kitchen. So the bedroom will be here to about three foot nine and then the, uh, the kitchen will be up top. So in the bedroom, I want these two windows right here, which are approximately three feet wide. So I'm gonna figure out my opening that I have here. From here, I had originally planned eight foot six which I'll probably end up going shorter so that my wheel well won't show. And now I got eight foot four of the wheel well and I'm gonna do an inch and a half wall right there to cover that up with a little bit of insulation. So from that, eight foot two and a half. Eight foot two and a half. So I'll place it on my wall. I'll hold my end of my tape on that mark. Eight foot two divided by two is four foot one. So I'll mark that as a center. When I'm marking a center, I'm just going to do a real light mark, and I'll put a C on top of it, uh, representing a center. So from that mark, I'm going to go over six inches, both ways. And that'll be my jack, jack stud. Now at this stage, you should already have all your windows figured out. If you're going to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy your windows, Go there at, at this stage right now, even if you're not going to purchase them, and get a list of exactly your ROs, rough openings. Uh, that way when you figure these, you can figure that out exactly. Now when you do your jack stud, you've got to remember that that jack's going to add an inch, inch and a half to that. Plus you want to add a little bit of wiggle room for your window, so when you set it in there, you can shim it. In case your walls aren't perfectly square and level, you can move the window around and make them level. So I'll hold on my mark. And I'll take into consideration the thickness of my two jacks that I'm going to have. I'm going to mark three foot three, which would end up giving me three foot on the inside. Now that I have all my windows and doors laid out on this wall, I can go back and put in my marking for my studs and my cripples. Now, if you watched when I did my, my joist layout, I said this was going to be my magic corner. So I'm always going to pull my numbers off of this corner. Now, since I want all my studs 16 inches on center, and I want my plywood to always work good with that 16 inches on center. I'm gonna mark 15 and a quarter. 15 and a quarter is three quarter inch less than 16 inches. So if I put a mark at 16, that would be the center. If I go one way or the others, I could go 16 and three quarters, but the way I've always done it is 15 and a quarter, and the mark will be set ahead. So if I just keep going with 15 and a quarter and then 31 and a quarter, which is three quarters less than the next 16, uh, when I lay my plywood on here, say I did an eight foot sheet, it'll land perfectly half and half on the stud. If I did a four foot piece, it would land half and half on that stud too. Instead of just putting a mark here and then squaring it, since this layout doesn't need to be perfect, you can be a little bit off, I hold my tape measure. I hold my pencil under my tape measure at 47 and a quarter, and I square it across like that. And I know my stud's going to be set ahead from that. Now anywhere you have a jack and a jack, in between the jack and the jack is not going to be a stud, it's going to be a cripple. So I put a C for cripple. Don't forget, always hold that three quarters of an inch no matter how far you go with this. Find your 16, come back three quarters and mark it across. Oops, it's going to be a C though, not an X. Now since these windows right here are going to mirror the windows on the opposite side, I took the plates from the other side of the trailer and I put them next to this. And I can just transfer these marks right here. I won't transfer my uh, stud layout just in case there's a slight difference. But I'll transfer my stud in my jack.
Now this end wall is going to have a roughly four foot by four foot window. Now since I have a closet that's going in this corner, first I'm going to measure out from my red line. Can't stop it. Measure out three foot, three foot three and a half. Also transfer those marks up to the top here. From the inside of the wall to this mark, I have 51 and three quarters. If I divide that in half, I have 25 and seven eighths. So I'll put a mark at 25 and seven eighths, and I'll put a center mark. Now what ends up happening is I'm not gonna be able to fit a four foot window in this opening here. What I'm gonna end up doing is just putting a stud and a jack, and a stud and a jack, and I'll make a window that fits into that opening. Same thing here, this is the, the inside of that closet wall. Stud on this side and a jack, a stud. I don't confuse myself later. I'm gonna put a mark at an inch and a half. And this will end up being a, uh, a two by six backing. That'll, be, that'll make an L, it'll create an L. So I have backing on the inside of this closet. So I'm gonna make sure I mark that two by six so I know that that's what that needs to be. Now once I have my window laid out, I can put my, uh, put my layout in. Now, again, this is my magic corner. I can't just hook on to here and mark 15 and a quarter because this wall starts three and a half inches in from that. So if I hold my tape measure at three and a half inches and I mark 15 and a quarter, square that across, set ahead. And now at that mark, I'll put a nail and I'll hook my tape measure onto it, making sure that I put that nail just a little bit this way so that when I hook this on, my my tape measure runs perfectly with that line. And from there I can mark all the 16s. Once I have them all marked, I'll square them across, make sure I set my, uh, my stud or my cripple on the correct side of that line. Now this window I have on the end wall, I want to match it with the same size window on this corner here. And I want the trim to be exactly the same on both sides of the window. I measure over three and a half inches. I measure over an inch and a half and three inches. That's going to be a pain in the ass to run the electrical wires through. So that'll be a stud and a jack, a stud and a jack. Now that's not going to allow me to do my, uh, my corner that I had originally planned to do in this corner. So over here what I'll do is I'll do a stud, I'll do a half inch piece of plywood and another stud. So I'll have a stud, half inch, stud, stud, jack. Now to figure out my length from this point to the end, I'm going to measure my opening that I have on this side, which is four foot half inch from the king stud. I'm going to measure over four foot half inch. That'll become my king stud and my jack. Instead of doing that sliding thing that I've been doing, you can just mark it like this. Put a, uh, put a C so you know the cripple goes that way. Once you have the plate marked, you can come back, square it across. Now my last wall that I have to lay out is going to be my, uh, my bathroom wall. It's just going to have one window and it's going to be up high. There's not going to be one in the bedroom. So basically this window is going to end up being in the center. and It'll be approximately two feet wide. Where this plate is, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to get the total length and divide it by two. So 91 inches. 91 divided by two is, fuck if I know, 45, 45 and a half. Just to make sure I'm doing my math right, I'm going to check it from the other side and it's good. Problem that you might have here is my shower is going to be right in this corner. So if I measure from there over one foot and I put a mark at two feet, I need to have 34 inches and I have 33 and a half, which means this window is not going to be two feet because my shower is going to end up coming out 34 inches. I also want to do some trim, which means that I'll have like a 16 inch wide window, which is freaking tiny. So I was looking at this window and since once I do all my, uh, my trim on the window, my opening right now is 16 inches, so I'm going to have a casing at least an inch, which brings me down to 14 inches. Around the window, I need to use four inches at least of material, so that'll bring me, which leaves me with a six inch window. I think I'm just going to offset this window completely and make it a larger window. You know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to install a window in this corner. If I decide later to put it in, I'll show you how you can uh, modify a wall to install a window. So, so again, I can just hold three and a half inches and I can pull my numbers off of this way. Because this wall runs parallel with the other wall, these studs will line up all the way on the end. The reason I want my studs to always line up is so that when I do my rafters, my rafters will sit directly on top of that stud. So all the weight will get transferred down. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you liked the video and you felt it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. Fuck me in the ass.